Hello, model enthusiasts from across the globe. This is Model Behavior, and today our how-to is going to be about polishing photo etch. Now, if you've looked at an older car that had a lot of chrome trim and a lot of emblems on them, you know that they were very highly polished and then plated. And that's a look that you can replicate very easily, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, first off, I want to make a big shout out to Model Car Garage. It's my company of choice, and quite frankly, it's the only choice. And if you want to put a uh, set of photo etch details on your uh, vehicle, and they have made quite a name for themselves over the past 30 years, and pretty much any American automotive subject by AMT, Monogram, uh, Round 2, if it's a model that's out there, they've probably made a kit for it to put all the details on it. And one thing that's exceptionally special about Model Car Garage products is they're made out of a nickel alloy. And what's that mean for you as a modeler? And that means that you can make these things look like chrome without having them chromed. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So what do you need for that? You're going to need a photo etch set, a Dremel tool or a Proxon motor mot like I use, Micromot, a metal polish, and this is my preferred one, it's called Wienall. And this tube is about 25 years old and it's still good. You'll need a flat surface that you can put the product on. And 409 for the cleanup along with some paper towels. So let's get at it. All right, we've got the photo etch out of the package and this is the early 60s, late 50s Corvette set, uh, 58 to 1960 models in particular. And this is, is just art. This is absolutely beautiful. Excellent crisp extra detailing in here. Um, can only get so close with this iPhone here. There you go. Look at that, you can read it. And it's just beautiful. One thing about it though, no matter what, it still has a bit of a texture. You can see those lines going lengthwise. So there is a bit of a texture, and even though it's been run through an acid machine, there's a texture, and that's what we're going to address. And the idea is basically to take your metal polish and create some heat, and metal polish is an abrasive. And so when you take that heat out, you can actually get rid of that texture and bring a nice lustrous chrome-like finish to it. So let's do it. One important piece of this project that you will need is a buff. Um, Dremel makes a buff set. Comes with, a, I think, about a half dozen or a dozen uh, small buffs. And you want the smaller ones like this for this project. If you get the larger ones, they turn at a much higher speed at the edge. So you're basically risking that you're going to basically tear up the photo etch because of such high speeds uh, that you will uh, cause problems. And the other thing, too, is with a Dremel, uh, I think their minimum speed is like 5,000 or 7,500. Be careful with them. Let the tool do the work. Do not put any pressure on the product, and it'll do the thing for you. And I say use the Dremel buffs because those ones that you can get on Amazon that are like big boxes, like these, they're worthless. Uh, they are not as soft as the Dremel pieces. And even though they're not as soft, they do tend to fall apart much faster, too. So get the Dremel product. It seems to be a superior product as far as this particular project is concerned. And you'll be great. Now the first step to this project is figuring out what direction your buffer is going to spin. On this particular tool, if you're looking at it from this end, it turns clockwise. So I need to tape down this end. And you can use masking tape or scotch tape. It doesn't really matter. It's just basically going to hold it steady. And there you can see it. Just tape down the edge. And from there, let me get my little stand going here. And from there, we take some of this little spot of wean all. Really neat right there. Now you can see why this tube has lasted 20, 25 years. And you want to load up your buffer. 
just a little bit. Don't have to have a lot. In fact, that right there will do the trick. You can get the majority of it off. You only need a little bit. And then you turn on your tool. And you start to polish. You go very gently. Let me go ahead and zoom in on this. And go very lightly over the product. Over that photo edge. Don't have to put any pressure on here at all. Let the tool do the work. And let the polish do its thing. When you stop seeing polish and turning black on there, go get some more polish. Now yes, this is a messy job, and yes, I am wearing a respirator because there's a lot of little fibers coming off of here. But you want to see a nice blackness coming out of there. That's the material being removed. Now if you're using a Dremel tool, stay in this direction only. Those high-speed tools, they do need to, to be under control, and it will grab the, the piece if you're not careful with it. And if you're using a lower-speed product like this, and that's why I love the Proxon, you can pick your speed, and it still has a lot of torque, even at lower speeds. And that's what we want to see. You want to see that blackness. I'm going to continue on this, but you can basically see the, the technique. I'm going to do some more polishing on this, and I'll turn this back in a second. One thing I do want to point out about the Proxon, the reason I love it so much, is that you can use it at low speeds, and it still has a lot of torque. But yes, you can crank it up just as high as a thermal tool, and this will take that final bit of texture out of that photo edge. against the texture. And maybe you see what this does. Be right back. Okay. Now that you've made a little bit of a mess on your bench, I did forget one thing that you will need. A soft toothbrush. You can use an either old one, or you can just buy some inexpensive ones that they have at the Dollar General Store. Doesn't matter. This is the only thing it's going to be used for. This is the only thing I'd use it for. And now you take your 409, couple sprays and gently just get that mess out of there and that's all we're really doing is we're just gently getting all that that black left over all that aluminum or not aluminum that nickel alloy we're just cleaning all the debris from the polishing process out of those little nicks and that's all it takes right there. And now, I'm going to take it, I'm going to rinse out this nasty toothbrush, and I'm going to rinse off our piece of plating, <laughs> our piece of photo etch, underneath some hot water, and we're done. We'll have to just do some cleanup after that. And by the way, I mentioned the respirator. Look at all that dust that comes off of those buffers. Yeah, that's why you wear a buff a respirator. respirator. Be right back, guys. Okay, we've cleaned it off, put it under the sink, and look at that shine. It is truly amazing. It is completely reflective like a mirror. I do have to do some more washing, because I do have some material left behind, but oh my gosh. There's no more texture. It is just absolutely beautiful. You put it on your model now, and it's going to look like you have chrome trim on it, and it does make a difference. And if you have 112 scale products, which Model Car Garage does sell the photo etch for the 67 Corvette, the 57 Chevy, and the 69 Z28 that are in 112 scale, those make an even bigger impact, guys. This should be one of those basics for every model you build. Detail set, polished up like this. 
All you need is the buff set, which are about $12 at Home Depot. You need a Dremel tool, which pretty much every modeler gets. It's one of the first things. Uh, one of those little mirrors like I have, you can get over at Michael's or Hobby Lobby for like 5 or $10. A cheap toothbrush and some 409 in the Wien All or any kind of model, model, metal polish. They're typically about $7 at an auto parts place. And you're in business. Look at that. So pretty. Like I said, this one still needs to be buffed out a little bit, but it looks fantastic. And that's it for this week, guys. Have a great week. Keep building them. Build them all.